you go back in the past, I think one of the, the greatest impact of converging technologies is actually we sent a man to the moon in 1969. So now it's time for scientific odyssey to not walk on the moon, but walk in the mind, which is basically understanding how the brain and the mind works so we can better adapt ourselves to the growth of the technology and use the richness of the technology out there. So, I mean, what do we all want? Well-being, increase our uh, physical and uh, cognitive abilities. We are all aging. There's just something happening. There's nothing we can do against this. Um, and if you take this concept of uh, mind-machine interface, it's everywhere. It's in your smartphone. It's in the computer you can open every day. It's also whenever you go to browse the web or even Facebook. Because you have access to a device which is outside. This is not like in your, it, it's basically in your house via those devices. And those devices have access to massive storage, massive computational power. And that's what our brain do. We have a massive capacity for storage and a massive computational power. And when you put together storage and calculation, you get the notion of prediction. We do predict all the time. The mind, the, the mind is like a time machine. So now this prediction power is outside and via those devices we can access to it. And what technology has done for us over the past 10 years is to compress time and space. How? Well, it compressed time in a way that before you had to go to the library to learn something or uh, even uh, get some more knowledge about medicine or anything. Now you can tweet it. Now you have access to this information right away. Do you also compress time in the way that if there is an event occurring in the world, there's a zero lag between knowing about this event and some reaction to it. So you can see how the technology give access to this compendium of um, human knowledge, uh, data storing, computation, and, uh, and prediction. And um, there's also the technology also out there allow us to compress time in a very interesting way, because now anywhere you are in the world, you can access to a web-enabled device, and you can learn. That's going to, it's going to revolutionize education. You go online. Uh, there's going to be all those courses uh, that are going to be offered by university and uh, people who, who are really excellent teachers. And you're going to be able to get like a bachelor in engineering and or physics or biology. And this is going to revolutionize education in the way that now multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary knowledge is going to be at the core of what you can get on the web. You're not going to go into the a classroom and do only a bachelor of physics or psychology. You're going to be able to do your menu and, you, and learn a lot of techniques, learn a lot of uh, knowledge that are going to be available out there. So if you think about the fact that now um, this technology out there and our access to it can also improve education in a massive way and give a bachelor to everyone, but a good bachelor, good knowledge, well, uh, when you have knowledge, you can make some prediction. And when you make prediction, novel prediction is called creativity. So then you're going to have more people who are going to be able to create new knowledge, new technology, having new ideas, and this should bootstrap jobs, economy, and so on. So at the core of it, it all starts with understanding um, basically how our brain and our mind works, how we uh, react in a social situation, how we are going to be able to work with those devices who are going to be there to guide our health, to give us answers in no time if something happens. Imagine a tsunami coming. Well, uh, imagine that you have the, the, the power out there, the, the massive amount of data to make prediction that this is coming and you have a way to access to a large population. All those devices are now becoming cheap. You can have them at home, you can have them in your hand. Well, you can, you can see how um, this growth of technology 
can be there to basically uh, change the way we, we get to the information and the way um, we can be saved. Having something that's going to be very important to all of us is uh, this notion of uh, you can have a kind of medicine at home um, because you, you, you may have those devices that can uh, always be a sensor that know what's going on, particularly if you are at risk. Uh, and uh, this, this immediate reactivity uh, that can occur around you um, is, I think, breathtaking could be really breathtaking away because some people can, can have access now to knowledge to how uh, better take care of themselves. Um, Various sensor that can actually monitor some of the activity uh, and react with a zero lag. Um, and this also can be the case when you are uh, driving in a car and uh, it, can, it can also be the case when you are learning new material. If there's anything wrong, um, out there or something that is that has an error uh, because of this no lag and access to information error can be corrected so basically it's going to enhance education better training and our everyday life converging technology is going to require converging people which is people are going to have to work together um, multiple disciplines are involved the nanotechnology the, the biology, the, the physics, cognitive science, neuroscience, social science, computer vision, computer science. Um, a lot of us are experts in one domain. Well, we are going to have to come together to create this new technology, this new bridge between user and the devices out there, being the cloud, being a smartphone, being a patch. Um, or any system we are going to communicate with. Uh, so the, the barrier here are uh, basically you need to create those institutions. You need to, to, to create an ecology where people are going to, put, to be put together and work on a kind of integrated science of the mind and this requires possibly institutions or centers or funding mechanisms where people are excited. They are together to, to work on a, a specific uh, product or project. Um, and the second one, I don't think it's a barrier. I think it's, it's, it's beautiful to see this happening, is this revolution in education. Because people are going to have, they are going to have the possibility to learn, to have an excellent training uh, with a fast correction of error and knowledge in multidisciplinary domain. That's the seed. They, I mean, we are going to have a generation of researchers that are going to be ready for converging technology in the next five to ten years. I think we want um, the youngest generation of researchers and scientists to have no fear to cross barrier in um, the various discipline, which is go for it, learn as much as you can, from the nanotechnology to the biology to the computer science to the social science because you will be better prepared for um, what's coming next. And um, I really, really wish that um, the younger generation is going into interdisciplinary study.